this is Viz 2320 Computing 2, and this is the first unit on uh, the on Python syntax. Um, so if you're a Leeds student, you'll be able to download this uh, Jupyter Notebook um, uh, and as a PDF version as well from the Minerva pages for the module. Um, and in this first video um, for the syntax set, we're going to do a quick revision of the basic bits of Python syntax. So we're going to start first of all by looking at mathematical expressions. So obviously if we're doing scientific programming then a lot of our time is going to be spent doing maths. Um, so integer and floating point numbers you can express them pretty much as you'd expect as you'd write them in the maths. Um, you can also express um, uh, larger numbers with a mantissa and exponent format. Um, and then the other thing about Python is that you're able to work with complex numbers. Um, uh, it sort of comes out, works out of the tin with complex numbers. But the only thing you need to be aware of is that rather than using i, the letter i for the square root of minus one, um, it uses the letter j. Um, and this is basically because there's a convention in electrical engineering uh, where they tend to use i for currents, um, and so they use j for the square root of minus one. Okay, so numbers are as you'd expect them to be. Uh, and then the basic operators, minus, plus, multiply, divide, and so on, all work as you'd expect. Um, and so you can just run through trivial sums and show that they do everything you'd expect. There's one thing you need to be a little bit careful of. The overall execution order of the operators is the same sort of bottom mass that you'll have learned at GCSE. But you do have to be a bit careful when you've got a sum that sort of does... Um, say 3 times 4 over 5 times 6 in this case. So where you have a uh, denominator that is itself um, a, a multiplication. And of course this happens really quite often when you start coding a uh, physics formula up. And the main thing to be aware of is you need to put the brackets in, otherwise it won't do the sum right. If you don't have the brackets in and you just write 3 times 4 over 5 times 6, what it actually does is 3 times 4 divided by 5 and then all of that multiplied by 6. And that's a very different number. The power operator um, is uh, asterisk asterisk, so double double times, um, and is not the circumflex, which you may have come across if you've programmed in other computer programming languages. The circumflex is, in fact, an exclusive OR operator. So to do two cubes, you just do two times times three, and that gives you eight, as you expect it to be. The other set of operators that you're going to end up using an awful lot are the comparison operators. So these are testing the relative value of quantities. So um, one of the common ones obviously is equal, so is the left hand side equal to the right hand side, and that's done by a double equal sign. So notice there's a double equals and not a single equals. Uh, not equals to is a exclamation mark and an equal sign. And then greater than and less than are uh, exactly what you'd expect. Um, greater than or equals to is done with a greater than sign and an equals sign. And less than or equals is a less than sign and then an equals sign. So just to point out a couple of common mistakes. So um, it's important you distinguish between what a single equals sign is doing and what the double equals sign is doing. So a single equal sign is used to make an assignment to the value. So when you see the single equal sign, what you want to be thinking is it's sort of set something equal to something else. So in this case, it'd be set x equal to 4. And that's different from the double equal sign, which is asking the question, is x equal to 4? So the double equal sign is, the, is a comparison, and you're asking a question. And a single equal sign is an assignment. You're doing something. And then the other thing, if you've come uh, with experience of using other programming languages, is that in some cases they'd use a less than, greater than um, to be not equal to. Uh, but in Python, it's exclamation mark equals. So then on to some of the less common operators. So there is a family of what are called bitwise operators. So these are working with a binary representation of a number. So in other words, 2 is 1, 0, 3 is 1, 1, 4 is 1, 0, 0, and so on. 
and what they're doing is they're comparing the individual digits of those binary numbers um, to come up with a rule as to how to create a new binary number. So in the case of the logical AND, if the two, if the bit on the left hand side and the bit on the right hand side are both 1, then the answer is 1, otherwise it's 0. Uh, for the logical OR, if the bit on the left hand side is 1 or the bit on the right hand side is 1, um, or both, they're both 1, then the answer is 1, otherwise it's 0. Um, the circumflex here, this is the logical exclusive OR. Um, so this is if the bit on the left hand side is 1 and the bit on the right hand side is 0, or the bit on the right, left hand side is 0 and the bit on the right hand side is 1, it'll be 1, otherwise it's always 0. So in other words, it's only going to be 1 if 1 and only 1 of the two bits is 1. And then logical not simply swaps the 1s for the zeros and the zeros for the 1. And then there are these two uh, what are called shift operators. So they simply shift all the digits to the left or to the right. Um, if you shift them to the right, then you're basically reducing it uh, by a factor of 2. So if you look at the binary numbers up the top there, 4 is 1, 0, 0. If I shift everything to the right um, and fill up the, the left-hand side with zeros, then what I get is a 1, 0, um, and like, which would be 2. And likewise, if I have the 2 and I shift it to the left, uh, I just get a 1. And so every time I'm dividing by 2, um, sorry, shifting to the right, I'm dividing by 2. If I shift to the left, then I'm making everything bigger by a power of 2. So I've shifted all the digits to the left and put a 0 in on the right-hand side, then 2, which are the digits 1, 0, becomes 1, 0, 0, which is 4. And so you can show that does all of the things you'd expect. So 2 and 3 is doing 1, 0 and 1, 1, and that therefore gives an answer 1, 0, which is 2. 2 or 3 is 1, 0 or 1, 1 which gives you 1, 1, which is 3. Um, and then um, 2 exclusive or 3 is 1, 0 exclusive or 1, 1. So the only thing you get left there is a 1, so you get a 1 out at the end. The not um, is always a little bit confusing, um, and this is to do with how um, negative numbers are represented in binary. Um, uh, so it's always a little bit confusing, but in, it turns out that not 2 is in fact minus 3. And then here we're doing the um, shift operator. So if we shift the digits for 2 over by 1, it divides it by 2, so we get 1. And if we take the digits for 2 and we shift them to the left by 1 place, we're multiplying by 2, and so we get 4. So then the final thing I'm uh, going to come up in terms of operators is talk about the Boolean operators. So these are AND, OR, and NOT. And unlike with the bitwise operators, these are working with just single true or false values, um, rather than a binary representation of numbers. So true and false is false. True or false is true. And not true is false. And the main point you place where you use these Boolean operators is when you're writing um, conditions, when you're using branching statements like if, and you need to combine together several tests um, together. So then there are only very few mathematical functions that are actually built into Python. It's a very uh, Spartan language from that point of view. So it has an absolute value, it's got um, Things like the maximum and minimum, it's got various rounding and sum, but there's not very much. In order to get um, any more complicated maths functions, you need to import a module that defines maths functions. So in computing one, you will have used the math module mainly, uh, but in computing two, we're going to recommend that you use NumPy. Um, this is because NumPy is, well, it's faster. Um, it works with arrays of numbers. We can work with multiple numbers all in one go. Um, uh, and it's also actually just basically better behaved. So, for example, it does actually know what to go and do with the square root of minus 1 um, uh, and doesn't throw an error, which is what the math module tends to do. So, pretty much exclusively, you're going to want to work with NumPy and just forget about doing uh, using math. There is absolutely nothing that math does that NumPy doesn't do at least as well and in many cases better. 
Okay, so um, we can call the functions just by writing their name, putting the brackets, and then putting the value in the brackets, the same as you might do in, in uh, straight maths. Um, if you want more information about functions and how functions work, then there's a whole set of video tutorials on them as well. Um, so notice here that the absolute function, absolute value function ABS here, does know what to go and do with a complex value um, and does correctly work out its magnitude. Um, and here we're going to have an example where we're calculating the sine of 45 degrees. Um, the numpy trig functions all work in radians, so we want to do pi over 4. Um, and you'll see that does indeed get us the 1 over the square root of 2, uh, which is what you'd expect for the sine of 45 degrees.